Do you know concept design is the first step in design of steel buildings? Conceptual design is a key tool for structural designers to turn their design ideas into reality. Today, I will guide you through five steps of concept design, including functional framing, structural grid, load path, material specification, and initial sizing of steel elements. After watching this 10 minutes video, you will learn concept design of a medium rise steel building. This is part 29 of lecture series on steel design. Whether you are civil or structural engineer or a civil engineering student, this tutorial is for you. Hey friends, if you're new here, I'm Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer in structural engineering and design at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. Concept and scheme design is divided into these four lectures and tutorials. Part 29 is the third part of concept and scheme design where I will be solving a practical example of a steel building. This is concept design example. This building is a rectangular building, 36 by 18 by 14. Horizontal dimension is 36 and 18 is the width of the building and the building is 14 meter high. So three times three for upper stories and for bottom stories is five meter. Assuming all floors three meter high and accept the ground floor, which is five meter and assume office use, the minimum column internal spacing is to be 10 meter at least in one direction. This is the condition which is given to us. Now we have to design this building. Nothing is given here. If I ask you to design its concept, what would you do first? So the first is concept design. And in this concept design, I'm going to follow the steps. Now, these are steps for concept design. In concept design, first we need to establish a structural grid, which means that column positions and spacing, framing, load paths, material specification and initial sizing of elements. Where the key is that we put columns and beams and we want to establish the size of these members. Because the horizontal dimension is 36, the vertical is 18, and it was required that the minimum column spacing, at least in one direction, has to be 10 meters. This is the reason we have kept these dimensions as 12 meters, which is more than 10. Ideally, the typical grids should be 6 by 9 or 7.5 by 9, but here we cannot certainly obey the standard grids. The purpose of this exercise structural grid is to locate columns based on the restrictions which are given to us and then column spacing, which we can see here that two columns are spaced at 12 meter and in width direction, two columns are spaced at six meter. And then the second step is framing, which means that establish a primary secondary beam layout. We want to use a primary and secondary beam layout. The secondary beam is denoted by this red line and primary beam is denoted by this green line. The beams which are running horizontal here, these are secondary beams and the primary beams are these which are in vertical direction. So a span of primary beam, this is primary beam. It is important to understand the spans. The span of slab, the slab is resting on these secondary beams and the span of the slab, because there are two secondary beams in between this grid, this means that the span of the slab is two meter, which is given here, which we have decided here. What you could have done is that you could have used actually one secondary beam as well, but it's entirely dependent on you. Here we are using two secondary beams. The span of primary beam, which is this one, is six meter. The span of a secondary beam, which is here, is 12 meter. And the span of slab, which is this distance between two secondary beams, is two meter. So there will be special conditions for lifts and stairs. We have decided about the framing. We have decided about how we're going to put primary and secondary beams. Firstly, we decided about the grid. We decided about the column positions, uh, spacings and core positions, and then establish a grid and naming identification. So then we have to establish this grid, A, B, C, D, and naming identification so that we know that which beam or column we are designing. In framing, we have to put bracing as the lateral stability system, stability type and locations. 
Now, this is very important. We will use four shear walls for wind on short face. So if the wind is blowing on this short face, it will be resisted by these shear walls. Now, note that shear walls are placed on long face, but they are resisting wind on short face. And two brace bays are used for wind on long face. Now, see here, these bracings, these are placed on short face, but the wind is blowing on long face. Two brace bays are used for wind on long face. So, bracing placed on short face will resist wind, which is acting on long face. This is very important to understand because clearly, if wind is blowing in this direction, this wall cannot resist in the other direction because it's going to be small. Now, this is how the lateral stability system bracing and shear wall will look on plant. This is the plant view. You can see that we have two bracings here and then at corners we have these shear walls. Now the third step is to show load path. Load path on the short face you will see that on short face you have the wind bracing and then load is transferred from slab to beams and then from beams to columns. The horizontal load is transferred via this bracing and again to the column. It travels all the way down through the foundations and then again this is load path for the long face you can see that load is transferred like this from beams to the columns and then from columns to the columns underneath and this is how loading is transferred down to the foundation and then material specification i would simply use s275 steel for primary and secondary beam which we normally use in the uk i will use s355 for columns and i will use this comp floor 60 for composite slabs because i'm using primary secondary beam configuration and then comes the preliminary sizing of beams. Now, first thing first, you know that the span of secondary beam is 12 meter. From the sizing of the table, you know that for secondary beam, 4 to 20 meter, we have this beam depth, L over 15 to L over 25. We have two extremes here. One extreme is a 4 meter beam. Other extreme is a 12 meter beam. For small beam, we use span over depth ratio of L over 25 rather than 15 because L over 15 will give us deeper beam. So for shorter beam, we will use a shorter depth. So shorter depth can be ensured when we have in denominator, when we have a larger number. That's the reason for four meter span, we have a span over 25, which is 480. This is one extreme. For 20 meter span, we have a span over 15, which results in 800 millimeter deep. Now, our span is 12 meter. We are using, I mean, something closer here, which is closer to this one. Or you could interpolate between these two values to find out what could be your ideal size. So in between these two extremes, you can pretty much choose any size, but this is the one extreme for four meter and then for 20 meter, it has to be really, really deep. So I am choosing 500 mm deep beam and I'm choosing 533, 210 and 101. Arbitrarily, I'm choosing any beam from section table, the one which is closer to 500. So simply go to Tata Steel Blue Book and see what is available. So if you go there, go to dimensions, you can you can choose any any beam 533. Once that we have chosen is 533, 210 and 101. We have chosen this. And this is arbitrary based on the depth. You can choose any one which is closer to 533. We will decide later if it is going to work fine or not. This is pure based on span to depth ratios. Now see that here we have this minimum and maximum we can choose in between or you can interpolate in between. The things are a little bit fluid here. It's not a hard and fast rule that okay you will use this is span to depth ratio. Now again for primary beams, now see here a span of primary beam is 6 meter. For 4 meter a span, it will result in 400 millimeter deep. For 12 meter a span, this will result in, because the span of primary beam is less, then certainly it will give you lesser kind of depth. Now the limit of primary beam is 12. We can't go beyond 12. We should ideally choose in between these two, but the reason is that because we have chosen this secondary beam, which is quite deep here, in order to fit this secondary beam on primary beam, we have to choose primary beam, which is larger than 600 millimeter deep. So that's why I'm choosing the upper extreme over here. Normally in real life, what will happen is that you design those secondary beams as steel concrete composite beams, and that reduces the depth to little lower depth. 
and then you can revise these sections. At any point, you can revise these sections. But here, for our exercise, I have to choose a primary beam which is larger than secondary beam so that the secondary beam could fit into primary beam. So it will have some kind of connection over here so that it can fit with the help of bolts to primary beam. So that's the reason that the depth of the secondary beam has to be smaller than primary. So primary, I'm choosing 610, 229, and 133. I just have this indication I'm choosing any section which is equal to 600 or larger. So going to section table, I will get this information. Now, which section to choose specifically? Again, the things are a bit flexible, so you can choose any section. Important thing is depth here. Then internal columns. As we saw that this building is up to five stories, so we will use this from a structural engineer's pocket book. So for building up to five floor high use, you see universal column 254. So I'm choosing any section. Again, you can get this information from here. So you can go to universal columns and then you can choose any 254 by 254 section. So I'm choosing the first one, which is available 254 by 254 by 167. By concept design, we have to locate the position of members, position of columns, position of beams, position of primary beams, position of bracing, position of shear wall. And then we have to use the span over depth ratio to work out their depths. And then from there, you can choose a section. That section can change later if it does not satisfy the loading requirements. But first, in the concept stage, at least we have something. If somebody asks you to, okay, this is the building, design it now. Then if you have nothing available, simply use the span of depth ratio. For beam, you can fairly assume a span over 20. And, and then columns, you, you can choose pretty much any column from here. 